Good morning. Uh, welcome to the Distance Learning Resources for Career Technical Education. Uh, we're here on behalf of State Superintendent Tony Thurman. This is our uh, Career and College Transition Division COVID Task Force that has been working on distance learning for you in the field. Today's participants in our uh, presentation will be our Deputy Superintendent of the Equity and Access Branch, Kahim Jackson, our Division Director for Career and College Transition Division, Pradeep Kodamurjo, Michelle McIntosh, Administrator of the CTE Leadership Office, myself, Pete Callis, Administrator of the High School Innovations and Initiatives Office, Allison Frenzel, Education Program Consultant in the CTE Leadership Office, Jewel Clark, Integrated Curriculum Coordinator for San Diego County Office of Education, Amanda Samens, CTE Online Program Coordinator for Butte County Office of Education, and Stephen DeWitt, Deputy Executive Director at ACTE. Uh, today's webinar will cover, cover a number of areas, and this will be our agenda on this slide that we'll be covering. Uh, we have a number of our task force members that will be presenting today. Uh, Career and College Transition Division Task Force, who I just named off, um, worked on this, and then we have a uh, lesson adaptation document. We have partnerships that we're going to discuss, weekly newsletter that has been going out, uh, CTE distance learning web page that is under development at this time. And then also what ACTE is doing as uh, federal supports going forward. Uh, the CTD distance learning task force consists of education program consultants from across the career and college transition division representing the High School Innovations and Initiatives Office, the Adult Education Office, Agriculture Education Office, and CTE Leadership Office. After our internal team was assembled, we solicited support from the field who have experience in CTE distance learning, and we've added uh, some more task, for, task force members from the field. The task force at an initial test developed a survey to get feedback from the field on concerns and supports that they would need to achieve success with distance learning in CTE. The task force reviewed and prioritized the results of the survey and created an action plan. Our task force presenters will share aspects of the action plan throughout today's webinar. Now I'm gonna pass it over to Michelle McIntosh for the next part of our presentation. Thanks, Pete. Partnering with the Butte County Office of Education with the CT Online Project and the San Diego County Office of Education within our state, we also reached out to our national partners at the Association for Career Technical Education, ACTE, to help us source and or develop many of the resources that we will share with you today. Because we are data driven, we wanted to be able to first provide resources and information that were needed most. That being said, we were very pleased with receiving over 348 responses to our distance learning survey. The survey results told us that the highest need of respondents at 82.6% needed assignments and assessments designed for distance learning, followed by 47.3% who needed sample documents such as student check-in forms, communication to families, websites, and more. 46% of you needed resources for supporting special populations. 45% um, needed distance learning pedagogy and curriculum development training. 42% needed training in virtual platforms. And 33% needed industry support. I'll now pass it over to Amanda Samens, or I'm sorry, pass it over to Allison Frenzel, who is our Distance Learning Task Force Coordinator. Hello, everyone. So as a result of the survey results, um, and this was very early on, we wanted to create something that would help educators in the interim as districts were still establishing and formalizing their distance learning plans. 
So as a first step, I consulted with Dr. Tim Green and Dr. Loretta Donovan, directors of Cal State Fullerton's Master's in Educational Technology program, to discuss the creation of an open access lesson planning template to support CTE teachers in adapting existing lessons to an online format. The template was designed to be simple and straightforward. It includes engagement strategies for implementation of online learning, suggestions for best practice when using tech tools, and provides a template for lesson planning that can be attached as a cover sheet for a student-facing instructions. The template was modeled after the Universal Design for Learning Lesson Builder established by the Center for Applied Special Technology and includes considerations for variability and accessibility as an embedded component. This document is designed to be replicated, customized, adopted, and or edited with no attribution required and can be found in the CTE Online Distance Learning Collections. For many years, CTE Online has been the premier place for CTE teachers in California to access high quality turnkey lessons and collaborate with other teachers in their sector sector via our sector community groups. Working with the CTE Distance Learning Task Force, we have brought in industry sector specialists for each industry. These are teachers in the field that are avid users of CTE Online. They serve as our industry sector community group leads and have written CTE Online curriculum in the past. So these people are combing through the many resources that are already available through CTE Online in their respective sectors and curating the best resources on our distance learning page. They are also reviewing CTE online curriculum and identifying those that are easily adaptable to distance learning. Next slide, please. These teachers are leading the way by adapting lessons already available within their sectors, using the distance learning adaptation template that Allison just spoke about. Moving forward, new curriculum that is being created to add to the site will include resources and adaptations to support distance learning. Teachers can easily locate all of these vetted resources by visiting cteonline.org and navigating to the distance learning resources page. We have a team that's ready to help you. Know that you can email webmaster at cteonline.org at any time for support with accessing and using CTE Online curriculum and resources. When you're lesson planning for distance learning uh, in CTE, there are a lot of things that you want to take into consideration. We know that CTE offers a unique smaller learning community on a school site. And currently our primary concern is students' physical and mental wellness. So this is an opportunity to really connect with students. Be sure to check in with them and see how they're doing. Uh, in talking to teachers, some of the best ways to engage students is to have theme weeks, like bring your pet to school or chair innovation challenges. Um, you can also use video for students to engage with each other and bring students together and get them excited to see each other. Then you can engage students in learning by providing the relevant learning opportunities that CTE has always been known for. When you're planning for distance learning, you want to consider the learning outcomes that will have the biggest impact on students when they return to classes in the fall and use those as a focus for student learning. Your school leadership has outlined parameters for learning. These might include things like the amount of time students will spend in your class, the technology they have access to, and the grading practices that will apply. These are a great starting point for your planning. Uh, and you'll also want to consider the assets students have access to, including school-issued resources like laptops or textbooks, as well as things that might be found around the home. In this case, I've heard environmental pathway teachers talk about upcycling projects, while students in education pathways may be able to facilitate learning for their own siblings as part of a project. Think outside of your normal classroom assets to build lessons that are flexible and can adapt to what students have access to. You might be surprised at what your culinary students can do with the mystery box that is their own refrigerator. Once you're ready to plan a lesson around a given learning objective, look for resources that lend themselves to flexibility. Include alternatives to give students choices and ensure that assignments are accessible to all students considering students IEP and 504 accommodations. You will also want to provide a mix of some synchronous and mostly asynchronous opportunities to allow maximum flexibility. Next slide. When you are beginning to plan, create a bank of learning activities. 
projects or media that meet your high priority learning objectives. You might see some of the things that you see on the slide. Um, and as you collect those different um, learning activities and projects, you can start finding things that are real world, that have high quality, um, and they might be better quality than you could make on your own. Next, you can curate what I call a learning playlist for your students from the bank of these options that you've put together. This playlist will become your week-long lesson plan. You can even incorporate student choice. For instance, you can ask students to pick three out of five options in some cases. As you're building this playlist, you might find there are some gaps in content, and that's where you want to invest your own time in developing an activity, screencast, or recorded lesson. Don't feel the need to create everything from scratch. Instead, draw on the many resources that already exist, as well as teacher networks in your region or CTE online. Consider using the distance learning adaptation template that Allison mentioned earlier in the webinar to organize student learning a week at a time. You may also lean on your students to suggest, search out, teach, or otherwise find ways to learn about a subject or tackle a challenge or project. Giving students leadership opportunities in distance learning is just as important as giving them those opportunities in the traditional classroom through CTSOs. As you're developing this learning playlist, keep in mind that even a student with access to technology should not be on the screen all day. Incorporate challenges that can accomplish, they can accomplish without a computer or that they can capture through photo or video in order to give them a chance to learn beyond the digital environment and ensure students with limited access to technology also have high quality learning opportunities. Make sure you're clear about expectations. When you release your learning playlist, let students know what they'll be expected to produce, when to submit it, and how it will be created. Remember that students should feel the expectations are clear and that their work is relevant and valued. This will lead to higher engagement and an increase in student participation in class. We will continue to develop resources to assist you in creating your lessons for distance learning specifically around each of the separate industry sectors, as that's really the challenge in CTE is there is a huge breadth of information that our students need to learn. We will be posting these on the CTE website that's soon to come, as well as our CTE newsletter and CTE online. One resource from the field is that weekly newsletter and Allison is gonna give you a little more about what you can expect to receive in your inbox every Thursday. Allison? Thank you, Jewel, and thank you, Amanda. Um, our work at CDE has been centered around collaboration on a local, state, and national scale. We've worked closely with the CT Online team to support the creation of distance learning collections and are fortunate to have Amanda spearheading that project. We are equally as fortunate to have Jewel with the San Diego County Office of Education Innovations Department taking a leadership role in the curriculum and instruction aspects of this effort. Two weeks ago, the CCTD Task Force also partnered with the Association for Career Technical Education to provide a, produce a weekly publication to be distributed to CTE programs across the country. This pu publication will include a weekly update, a career readiness lesson of the week, a resource of the week, a work-based learning spotlight, weekly live events and webinars, and a lesson of the week for each sector. These lessons are being sectored uh, curated by sector content specialists and selected based on cross-pathway potential, key concepts for end-of-year review, and career readiness. We've also kept in mind the necessity for adaptability to a distance learning format. We encourage you to subscribe to the newsletter at the address below. And we would love to hear from you, experts and practitioners in the field. So we have created a feedback form for indi individuals to submit content for the publication, which is linked in each issue. We are also archiving these newsletters in the CTE Online Distance Learning Collections. We are honored to be collaborating with ACTE on this project, and we welcome Stephen DeWitt to present on the work ACTE is doing on a national scale. So the next piece of our um, work that we're doing is our web page. Uh, we're also launching a web page dedicated to distance learning and career technical education on the CDE website. The page will have top picks for supporting adult education, professional learning, curriculum, media, and online courses, career exploration and work-based learning, and CTSOs. The CCTD task force is curating 
the resources on this page and it will be updated regularly as more resources become available. We understand that the districts are feeling overwhelmed with sorting through long lists of resources. So we're trying to include resources for CTE that are free through the end of the year, easy to navigate and simple to sign up with. The weekly publications will also be added to this page. And now I would like to turn it over to uh, Stephen DeWitt to talk to you about the federal level. Uh, we're having some technical difficulties getting Stephen online. We'll just take a minute here for us. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, Stephen, go ahead. Uh, Stephen, I think you're still muted. Can you hear me now? Yes. Sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> no uh, good morning. And for those of you who do not know the Association for Career and Technical Education, we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization based in the Washington, D.C. region, representing the nation's CT educators, administrators, and other professionals in the field. And like my colleagues on the call today, ACTE immediately went into crisis mode when schools began closing. We surveyed our membership as well, and we found that online resources, especially lesson plans, were a specific need. So for that reason, we are thrilled to be partnering with the California Department of Education and the other partners on the call, and I want to say a big thank you to them. In addition to the publication that was referenced earlier, uh, that's being jointly produced by the partners. We've developed some of our own resources, and those were based on the survey input that we had. Uh, and I wanted to just talk about a few of them. The first is our distance learning resources, which we have identified by sector, uh, such as health science or family and consumer sciences. We're organized by divisions, and that's how we've organized our resources. And you can find those via our homepage, which is acteonline.org. We also have a COVID-19 button at the top of our page, which is a one-stop shop for all of the information I'm speaking about today. But don't feel the need to go to either of those addresses because you're going to have a lot of this information in the publication that comes out every week as well. We also have produced a set of webinars uh, through our divisions, which were subject matter focused and we had panels for each of those webinars, and those were referenced in either the first or the second publication that came out. Uh, I think they're actually out this week, and you'll see them in the, the uh, archived resources section of the publication. Uh, and one of those additional uh, webinars I would like to point out is one that we did with the Federal Education Group focused on Perkins 5 and how Perkins might be affected by the COVID-19 issues. Uh, they do an excellent job in their, uh, their work. They're a lobbying and, and law firm, so I urge you to look at that if you have any interest in the Perkins issues. I also wanted to mention that we have six free courses that ACTE and our partner, Max Knowledge, is making available via our CTE Learn online learning network. And those courses uh, support teachers who are transitioning to this new online environment of course, I know many of you have been thrown into it and you're probably already experts, but if you need a refresher or you have colleagues that are struggling, those courses are available for free through May 31st. And again, thanks to our partner, Max Knowledge. And then uh, one additional resource that we are just working on this week that we are going to make available, uh, we had a work-based learning conference last week that was scheduled to be in person that we transitioned within two weeks to be an online event. 
and uh, it went very well. We, we had very positive feedback, and we put together a 20-page guide uh, to instruct others who are transitioning their events and conferences to online. So uh, if you're interested in that, we will eventually have it on our website, but you could write us at memberservices at actonline.org, and we'd be happy to share that with you. And then lastly, if we flip to the next slide, I just wanted to talk about an important aspect of our work that we do here in Washington, and that is advocating for the CTE community before Congress and the administration. Uh, and our policy staff have been hard at work advocating for CTE programs to be included in proposals that are being discussed at the federal level. We are producing a weekly running thread of information on COVID-19 resources, laws, and updates for CTE programs. And you can see the web address up on this page, which will take you to that thread, which is actually contained in our CTE Policy Watch blog. So we'll be updating that on a regular basis uh, as Congress moves forward. You will already find information on the CARES Act and other laws that have been approved. You'll find information on federal agencies such as the U.S. Department of Education and Labor. And we've also been doing a lot of phone calling and advocating from afar. We've sent a number of letters up to Congress and calling offices with our partners at Advanced CTE, which represent the state leaders in uh, government. So we'll continue to do that. And uh, just wanted to finally thank you for what you're doing to support students during this challenging time. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, this last page of our presentation has contact information uh, regarding our task force. And also a lot of the questions that have come up in the Q&A box are regarding whether this is going to be posted, is the recording going to be posted? And the answer is yes. So you'll be able to access uh, this PowerPoint and the information from the PowerPoint. We will also look at all the questions that have come in and we'll be able to answer, post the questions on CTE online um, so you can get your answers from that. So I'm gonna um, pass it over to our uh, division director, Pradeep. Good morning. Uh, my name is Pradeep Kotamarju. I'm the uh, director of the Korean College Transition Division. I know all of us are dealing with this new world and CTE is especially affected by this because a lot of the work that we've done traditionally is hands-on. And yes, we can, technology has improved quite tremendously that there are, there are virtual platforms that can give us that look and feel of getting the hands-on experience. And, but eventually, I think do, doing is, is what, the, what uh, students learn best and we're trying to replicate that in some way through this distance learning task force and, and the work that we're going to do. So we've, dis we've broken this up into, as you've heard from my colleagues, we've broken this up into three phases. And the first phase is essentially taking information from the CT distance, uh, CT online, and trying to take the, that, the, the, the curricula that is most suitable for online uh, uh, transfer, and we're developing that through our, our sector, sector leads and sector specialists. A as Allison talked about, the second phase and sort of moving concurrently is to sort of build out that distance learning template and guide a lot of you in the field to essentially use that template. You may have had a course that you had for many, many years, and it's, it's time that that gets transferred on to this template, and, and uh, both uh, Allison uh, uh, as well as Joel have, have provided ways in which that can happen. And the third phase is what I think we have to, we need your help from the field, is essentially looking at what does it really and truly mean to do CTE distance learning? That is, how do we go about not only in terms of developing the content of the curriculum, but even the pedagogy that is required around that? Because in a state like California, where 
resources aren't as equitable around all of the school districts, what do we do to equalize all of that? And that's something that we have, we will come back to you, uh, hopefully face to face, but if not, we will do the working through this, through the online process. So uh, one of the things that I think uh, uh, topics that we are probably most interested in and would, would like uh, insight and input from you is because under Perkins 5, uh, 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 accountability and data requirements, and also under CTIG, uh, both dual enrollment uh, or, uh, uh, and articulation, as well as work-based learning, are getting even more critical. And how do we, uh, to, to measure the, all of that within this environment? And that's another piece that we have to look at as we go, go forward. And what does assessment mean in this, uh, in this virtual environment? And finally, uh, uh, I, I appreciate all my colleagues here in terms of this collaborative approach that we took. As soon as we heard about uh, schools shutting down, uh, our, our team at, within CCDD uh, tackled this almost immediately. And I will, I will tell you this that I have been getting a lot of emails from uh, uh, not only from ACT that we, we contacted, but other uh, national entities that want to partner with California because I think uh, uh, they're looking at us as, as leading this effort as we move forward on distance learning. With that, I will turn it over to Kai Jackson, our Deputy Superintendent, to close out this part of the webinar. Good morning to everyone, and thank you, Dr. Kodam Raju, and uh, for everyone for being here uh, with us this morning. I really just wanted to take a opportunity on behalf of our state superintendent, Tony Thurmond, to thank you, first of all, for everything that you're doing to support your students, to support uh, families, and to support LEAs and, and industry during this tough time. Um, as we've heard from experts and educators in our CD team here today, uh, CTE is something that's normally more hands-on. And as we continue to move forward into this distance learning and e-learning environment, it will take a very intentional effort to ensure that we are uh, continuing and maintaining the gains that we have, but to intensify our efforts and to ensure that that there's a uh, minimal loss or no loss in this area. And so on behalf of myself and our team and the superintendent, um, I thank you. Um, we appreciate you all keeping your eyes on the ball to uh, strengthen the relationship between industry and LEAs and schools to support teachers in the area of CTE, to create uh, new opportunities for uh, existing teachers and to help uh, bring new teachers on board uh, in this area. And so with that, um, I'm very appreciative and look forward to the work that will come out of the CTE Distance Learning Task Force. You see there that we have those contacts. Do not hesitate to reach out to us. Um, and uh, we look forward to this continuing partnership in this new era. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks, Kai. As we've said, please look for the recording of this on CTE Online and the CTE website. Um, and please stay tuned. We have more webinars coming um, to bring more resources to you and more support. There were over a 1,000 of you that participated in this webinar today. So that's awesome participation on the field's part. We really appreciate you being part of this today. And again, look forward to more webinars from us. Have a great day.